I made myself the challenge to 3D print and build the most complicated model in 40k history and do it in under 48 hours. 3D printing such a huge model like this in 48 hours isn't going to be easy, never mind building it as well. The Thunderhawk gunship is for experienced builders and let's face it, I don't meet that criteria. After gluing my Warhound Titan's legs back to front making it look like its knee had popped out. With one printer, this isn't possible, but I have two, so hopefully by doubling my output, it will make it a bit more achievable, although I still think it's gonna be quite tight. It's time to get started by slicing the plates and see how many full plates we are working with, and more importantly, how long it's going to be estimated to take. It's impossible, it's literally impossible to print the Thunderhawk gunship in 48 hours even with two printers. Two plates take 20 hours each, but the other two will take 18 hours. Even if there are no failures, that would mean I would have to clean, cure, and build the model in less than 10 hours. That's going to be cutting it very close. If you don't know, the Thunderhawk gunship is a $847 model from Forge World that comes in over 100 parts and is a beast of a model. I might have to just scrap this model and choose a different one that's possible to do in 48 hours. A couple of days later, I got an email that changed everything. So I just got an email from a 3D printing company that wants to send me a printer and to top it off, they want to sponsor this video. Anycubic have sent me their new Photon Mono X2 and it couldn't have come at a better time. It's got a 9.1 inch plate, which means I'll be able to squeeze a few more pieces onto each plate. It's 200 millimeter height means I can use it to print some of the bigger pieces of the hull. I'll need to calibrate it first, which is usually a long task of doing calibration tests one at a time and then tweaking the settings after each one is finished printing. Never mind the time to take it off the plate and clean each one. But the great thing about any cubic printers is that they come with a USB stick that has a calibration file on it with a plate full of individually exposed calibration tests which takes all of the hard work out of setting up the printer. Well done Anycubic, more printers should do this out of the box. One unexpected bonus of using the Mono X2 was how much faster it is than my other two printers. I'm just using the stock settings that are recommended by the Mono X2 and to print off a similar height plate it's only going to take 13 hours compared to 18 and 20 hours from the other two machines. I actually think if I had three of these printers, I could have printed the Thunderhawk in a day. They also sent me their new standard plus resin and it's given great details. I can't pinpoint exactly what they have done that is different from their standard resin, but from my eyes, it gives better quality than their standard and it doesn't smell as much either. This might become my new regular resin and because it's printed off the body so well, I'm gonna print off the second wing on the Mono X2 to save even more time. The Mono X2 is currently on sale from Anycubic themselves for $349 or from Amazon, which I'll link down below. So 28 hours later, I had the parts of a Thunderhawk gunship. 20 hours to build it is gonna to be too easy, but how about eight hours to build and paint it? I spent the next hour washing and removing the supports, being sure not to break any pieces as I can't afford to print anything again. Having this model in hand is the reason I got into 3D printing. When I was younger, I studied the back of my Space Marine Codex and the entire Ultramarine company that took a whole team of J-Dubs employees to assemble and paint. I said one day I will have a Thunderhawk. I'd forgotten about this dream until recently and if I didn't have a 3D printer, there is no way in hell I would have been able to get one today. $847 for a model that will rarely see the tabletop because it falls into the Forge World trap of really expensive models that aren't to be played with and instead just collected. Why isn't there a plastic version of this model yet for a reasonable price? $100, $150 would be easier to swallow and easier to justify to my family. 30 hours in and it's time to build the pieces. There's just one problem. I can't find instructions online anywhere. So there seems to be multiple versions of Thunderhawks and Reddit is usually where I get my instructions from. 
but I can only find the old Thunderhawk instructions and they are terrible classic Forge World pay out your ass for a model and then have to decipher the instructions. I had six hours left to have this done in 36 hours and not having instructions was a major obstacle. I referred it to watching YouTube videos and trying to build it from what I could see. On top of the time restriction, I had a few mess ups with the building process. I broke the levers for the landing feet. I didn't put the adjuster for the air brakes at the back in before gluing the body together. And I have these pieces and I have literally no idea where they should go. Still, even with all these problems, the amount that I saved on this model more than makes up for it, but I'll expand on that later. Three hours later and it's built. Bits are missing, adjustments had to be made on the fly, but it's done. That leaves me three hours to paint it, and after spending 20 minutes spray painting it with some matte black from Halfords, it was time to airbrush it. Except it was too big for my airbrush booth, and I've had to work around this model at every step of the way, but by the grace of Horace, it will be worth it. I took the sides off the booth and tried to just keep any overspray to a minimum. I needed to touch up some areas with primer as spray paint just can't get into all of the nooks and crannies and there are loads on this model. I had just over two hours left if I wanted to complete this in under 36 hours. So when applying the Cenefil highlight with white ink, I spent more time to undershade and highlight different areas so that when I apply the base color, it will have a different gradient and mean that I might be able to get away without having to edge highlight. I then used Magic Blue from Vallejo and just went all over the model. Now it's easier to see why I spent more time highlighting select areas before. While I have the airbrush out, I sprayed some yellow ink on the light scattered around the model and to break it up, I used red ink through the airbrush on lights of the model that I imagine would glow red. I decided to take a break for a day or two before tackling the last hour and a bit of painting. Recently on the Discord, we held our first paint and Guinness event where we can stream ourselves painting while just having a relaxed voice chat and just hanging out. I knew that I wanted my last hour of painting to be with my brothers that I see every day. But I didn't tell them while I was doing it. At the start of this 36 hours hobby time, I had a file and I had a dream. Now I have a fucking Thunderhawk gunship. This brings me one giant step closer to a teenage dream of having all the models in that picture from the old codex. At some point, I'll probably blast this with some streaking grime and spend some time picking out all the small details. But for now, I'm just gonna enjoy seeing it on my desk because that's the only place I can put it because it's so bloody big. I haven't even told you how much it cost me. Before I break it down, many of you will know G-Dub's done a recent band wave and unfortunately this model was caught up in it. I'm not surprised because it's a bloody good sculpt. On the Patreon Hangout, everybody that came in, first response was, that is a great model. The creator has moved to another platform that has let him host his boosty models. I will link my Patreon and YouTube members to the model where it seems to be a haven for models like this. G-Dubs wanted $846 for their Thunderhawk and I printed mine for roughly $45. It used one and a half kilograms of resin, which is the same as a Warhound Titan. And it's the best one and a half kilogram I've ever used. Is the extra $800 really worth it? So what should I print next? Let me know in the comments below. But if you think that that saving is good, then you should watch this video next, where I 3D printed a League of Photon Army and I saved a shocking amount. As always, I wanna give a huge thanks to all my patrons Without your support, none of this is possible and I hope to see more of you in the weekly hangouts.